Recently, Adobe added this little AI edit status icon to the toolbar inside of Lightroom Classic. It also exists in Lightroom and Camera Raw, so what you see here is exactly the same in all of your Adobe Raw editors. It's While it's new, it actually is a feature that's it's almost in a way been there behind the scenes. So it's not some earth shattering new change to your workflow. So don't worry about it from that perspective. But I wanna talk about what that icon is, how you can even look at it and, and figure out if you need to worry about it. Then we'll also talk about what that suggested order of workflow is for the tools uh, that this is addressing. And even in some cases, I'm gonna suggest that you break that workflow order because I don't think it makes sense. Um, as we get into this, I know that there's gonna be a thousand questions when it comes to workflow on your specific workflow. You're using a plugin, you're using Photoshop, you're doing this on the third day of the month, during a full moon, standing on one foot, okay? Here's the deal, just try it. You can't do any damage to your photo. So whatever your question is for your specific workflow, I guarantee you, if you just try it, you will see that it doesn't really make a big difference, okay? So let's go ahead and jump in. Now, what we're gonna do is first, I wanna take a look at the AI edit status icon, because that's part of this. That's, that's part of the workflow that we're gonna talk about because uh, this is something that can impact your workflow. So if you look, this is a newer icon in the top right of the uh, top right of the develop module. It's a newer icon that was released in a recent update. And in this photo right now, it's grayed out. If you look at what I've done to this photo, all I've done are some basic panel changes to it. I haven't really used any tools, especially any AI tools on it. I've just done some basic tonal color changes to the photo. That icon's grayed out. That's normal. Okay, gray means you, you haven't used a tool that would even affect the AI status, so there's no reason for that little icon to even become active, okay? Now, if I were to go use a tool that required this, let's say I went in and uh, let's say I went in and just used some, I'll uh, go to remove, I'll just, you can use any, any remove tool, I'll just use generative AI here and I'll just, in fact, let's just use the healing brush. I'll get rid of some of these little, wire poles, electric poles, whatever they happen to be here. I'll get rid of some of those. But once I go in there and I do that, okay, and I close that up. Now, once I go back, if you look at that icon, it's now, if you were, it's now not grayed out anymore. I don't, it's highlighted, whatever you want to call it, but it's no longer just grayed out, meaning that I have used a tool that can be affected in this AI edit status order. Now, that icon is white or light gray, whatever you want to call it. It's just not totally disabled. What that means is everything's fine, okay? There's no color to the icon. Everything's total fine, totally fine. There's nothing wrong with the order in which I've done things. So let's switch over to another photo now, and uh, we'll take a look at what we've done to this. Very similar, I've done some basic panel changes to it. I also went, and in this order, I also went and did a lens blur and you can see it blurred the foreground. I don't know that I would normally do that. I, although I do love when landscape photographers creatively use blur in the photo. I think it adds something, but again, I normally do it. I did it for the video here, but I did lens blur first. I even added a post crop vignette, but that would that's really not affected by any of this. But then I went and did a little uh, distraction removal. There was a little spot, sensor dust, whatever it was in the sky there. So I went and just removed that. Now, once I did that order of things where I did lens blur first and then did, then did the remove tool, notice that icon is now like yellowy orange, okay? So that's the only time where you ever really need to worry about it because that means that there's, there's some kind of, of an issue. It's not a bad issue, don't freak out. It, it's not gonna do anything bad to your photos, but it does mean that there's a little bit of an issue and it's essentially just telling you that something needs to be updated or, or a filter needs to be rerun in order to properly render the photo. And it's telling you which one because it's kind of highlighted over here in, um, in, in orange. So you'll know which one it is, which is the lens blur. This is an easy fix, okay? It doesn't require you to do a lot. All you've got to do is just come down here and just click on update, all right? Nine times out of 10, you're not even gonna see a change in your photo. But you know what you will see 10 times out of 10? A very quick word from our sponsor, which is me in the middle of my video to help pay the bills. Uh, if you're interested, I have a little mini course it's called Scene Split AI Mini Course and Presets. It's based on a feature that Adobe uh, added recently to Lightroom and Camera Raw. 
that allows you to segment out automatic masks based on the parts of your photo. So we can do masks based on architecture, uh, vegetation, grass, trees, mountains, pavement, whatever it happens to be. And they're really powerful because now you can segment out what used to take us a long time to try to manually brush. You can segment these out, you can turn them into presets and you can really speed up your editing. So there's a little mini course, it gets you up to speed on it because I do think I do think masking is the most powerful feature inside of Lightroom. And I think this is probably one of the biggest updates that we've had to masking since that came out. So I wanna get you through that learning curve. And then also there's some presets to help speed you up and give you some creative ideas. So very easy to watch, very inexpensively priced. I hope you'll swing by to find out more. Let's get back to the tutorial. So we had left off where we just clicked update in the little AI edit status and it updated everything for us. We didn't even see a difference in the photo. So I think the first thing I would say is, is don't, don't become too caught up on that icon changing color. It doesn't mean anything's horribly wrong with your photo and something's going to be horribly wrong. It's just there to let you know. Could it become an issue later on? And we'll talk about the, the proper workflow order in just a minute. Could it become an issue if maybe you do something like denoise at the wrong time where denoise can take 20, 30 seconds and then maybe you have to go in and do it again later on. Could that start to get time consuming? It could. So we'll talk about that order in a second. But at this point, you know what it means, that icon means when it's gray. You know what it means when it's highlighted like this. And you know what it means when it has a warning sign next to it and how to fix that. So that brings us to how do we avoid it? Okay. When when we first went in there, all right, and if I'll take a I'll throw this image back on the screen, there was a little learn more link on there. And that little learn more link takes you to a place on Adobe's website that actually gives you the workflow. I'll pull it up here. So you're, you're welcome to scroll down to this page or take a screen capture of this page if you don't want to forget where it is. But this is the, the recommended order of operations. Okay. So what Adobe's telling you is in, to avoid unexpected results, you'd want to do uh, any HDR. And by the way, hopefully you're not doing all of these things on your photo. So don't take this as these are the things you should be doing on your photos. Most of the time, I never do HDR. Denoise maybe, you know, reflections, that's a Hail Mary. Uh, there's a lot of tools in here that you shouldn't always be using, but it's saying if you are gonna use them, this is the order that you should use them. So it's, it's telling me I should have done my distraction removal first, and then I should have done the lens blur. And when I first applied it, I did that in the exact opposite order. It's telling you that you should do denoise early on in the workflow. And I would agree with that. I would say that'd be one of the first things that I would generally do. Uh, it's telling you that any masking should be done last, okay? And I disagree with that. That's usually one of the first things that I'm gonna do and I'm not gonna change my workflow. Adaptive profiles, I, I tend to like adaptive profiles. And that's, again, gonna be one of the very first things that I do to my photo. Okay, so let's hop back over into Lightroom and let's go in here and let's turn lens blur off. Let me go ahead and get rid of my distraction removal. So let's go through this and, and I'll show you what I mean by it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in and just reset all the tone settings here. By the way, little keyboard shortcut option or alt click and then it just opens up reset tone. So I'm gonna go open up, uh, just reset everything. I actually like the adaptive color profile for some photos. So I'm gonna to go to the profile and I'm gonna to go to adaptive color and I'd wanna run it first, all right? That's, that'd be one of the first things I would wanna to do to my photo. I, I can't go on and, and do all these other things when my photo looks too dark to begin with, okay? And then I'd come in here and probably still uh, manipulate a little bit of it, add a little bit of warmth to it, maybe a little bit of saturation to some of the colors there. So that's the order that I would do. If I was gonna go in and run denoise, I would do denoise pretty early on. And when that's done for me, I'm, I'm probably gonna wanna go straight to masking and do some masking work on the photo. So I know Adobe recommends that last, but this is pretty early on in my workflow. I'll go to those, those scene split AI presets because uh, they do a good job of, you know, it'll detect the grass for me. I can do architecture. I can make that building a little bit brighter. I'll go to grass. I'll just do I'll just do brighter green because the the scene split the landscape presets actually detect any vegetation and grass in there. Um, but you can see we still have the warning icon over here because I went in the wrong order. It's, it's going to bug me a little bit. I think the grass is probably 
probably a little bit too too green there so i'm just going to pull back on some of that saturation and then when i go back over to this ai edit status icon up there in fact let's add let's add that lens blur to it as well okay and that was down later on in the process so that's not going to be a problem but when i go to that icon i can now see that it's telling me that, that i've done something in the wrong order here so you can see it's and it's here's the thing did i do these things in the wrong order I didn't, it's telling me the order in which it wants me to apply them. It's not giving me the order in which I did things, it's telling me the order in which I can apply them and that I need to go back and just click on update there and that'll update what I need to to take care of it. As I said before, is it a big deal right now? Not really, it only takes a few seconds. But if I did something like denoise and, and that was part of my workflow, which it is for some photos, uh, I would want to probably make sure since that took 30 or 40 seconds to run, I would probably want to make sure I, I adapt my workflow to include doing denoise earlier on so that I don't have to sit through that 30 or 40 seconds uh, later on. But as you saw with this, there are certain settings I would not even, I wouldn't even worry about it. I just do whatever I wanted to when I felt like I wanted to and then deal with that icon later if it only takes me a few seconds to update. Uh, as I mentioned, there were some new recent updates to Lightroom and Photoshop. So uh, if you haven't seen what those updates are, if you wanna learn a little bit more about them, I've got another video here, which is a great place to go to next.